Here's what's happening now. Thunderstorms starting to pop in the heat and humidity. So how soon are we going to have to be on guard for severe weather? Karen? Also ahead of family's heartbreak, a missing Marine is dead. And there's a new development in the investigation. Up first, breaking news. Federal, state, and local police descend on Heinz Park to search for Danielle Stizlicki. My experts say this area needed to be searched. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon. I'm Karen Drew. First at 4, the new search for Danielle Stizlicki comes with a sobering dose of reality for her family. Police believe Stizlicki is dead, and they're now searching for her remains. That search focusing on Heinz Park in Livonia. The 28-year-old woman has been missing since December of last year. Sean Lay has been out at the park all day long and joins us now with the very latest. Sean. Just spoke to the police chief, Karen. He tells us the very latest is this. After searching for hours today in the heat, nothing was found connected to Danielle Stizlicki. Take a look over my shoulder here. The park still closed right here at Newburgh and Hines Drive. Beyond there is the uh, where uh, authorities were searching. They're packing up their things right now as this search officially has come uh, to an end today. But I want to show you this. Take a look and we'll explain why this area was searched for hours today. From the air, Sky 4 can show you uh, the massive search area, how massive the area is here. It's the it's east of Newburgh at Heinz Drive. Investigators are saying this is the same area where Floyd Galloway is accused of attacking a jogger last fall. FBI profilers saying a predator would return to the same area. That's why today 155 people, local, state, federal law enforcement officials are using canines, cadaver dogs, metal detectors to look for evidence connected to the disappearance of Danielle Stizlicki. A major reset in this case, as the Farmington Hills Police Chief says, evidence points to Stizlicki not being found alive. It's hard for the family, but uh, they've expected us for a long time. We keep close communication with them. There's hardly a, a few days that go by that we're not uh, we're not talking with them. We've already communicated with them in the last couple of days, and we've already uh, probably just 15, 20 minutes ago was uh, communicating with uh, uh, Richard and Ann You know, they're anxiously waiting today. But the Stizlicki family, sadly, still waiting for answers about what happened to Danielle and where Danielle is. I also want to show you this. I want you to take a look at this on your screen. It's a list of evidence that police continue to look for. A tan and brown comforter, uh, Danielle's sky blue Eddie Bauer jacket, a black zip top that belongs to Danielle jeans and burgundy boots. Now, Karen, that uh, comforter, brown and tan striped comforter, a new piece of evidence unveiled today uh, by Farmington Hills Police that they are looking for. Coming up at 5 o'clock, I talked to the chief more about that piece of evidence, the importance of the piece of evidence in this case, and also we'll take you, our cameras, for a ride back there to see these investigators up close looking for that piece of evidence today. Back to you. So, Sean, what comes next after this search? You know, uh, Floyd Galloway on August 1st has a hearing here in Livonia for the attack on the jogger right here in Heinz Park. Now, the chief here tells us in Farmington Hills that if that uh, hearing continues on, there's testimony in that hearing August 1st, a lot more evidence will uh, come out of that particular court hearing about why Farmington Hills and Livonia worked together, how they came up with Floyd Galloway as a suspect, and why he is the uh, main person of interest still in the Stizlicki case. All right, Floyd Galloway back in court August 1st. And of course, we will join you at right. 5 and 6 with more from Heinz Park. Thank you, Sean. In Romulus, an investigation is underway after a person is electrocuted on the job. The employee was a line worker with one of DTE's contractors. The accident happened at Grover and Mary Streets. DTE issued a statement saying that employee safety is a priority. He also said they are working with local authorities to investigate the cause of the accident. A family's search for a missing Marine has come to a heartbreaking end as his body has been officially identified today. Douglas Calhoun was found inside a vacant Detroit home stuffed in a barrel on July 7th. A person of interest has been taken into custody on an unrelated charge. Police continue to investigate the case and the coroner is working to determine a cause of death. Well, many of you are talking about that big fire at the Buff Whelan Chevrolet dealership in Sterling Heights that happened last night. Today, the dealership is open for business, selling cars and offering limited service appointments for customers. The dealership says a cleaning service worker was using a floor scrubber near flammable liquids. 
and spark that fire. Our coverage continues live at 5 with a look at how the dealership is continuing to do business just hours after this fire. And then at 6, the emotional toll on the owners, employees, as well as the community. The business is very well known. Many people are feeling the impact. So make sure to stay tuned for that report at 5 and 6. Some of you enjoy that summer heat and humidity, but when it mixes with a cold front, you better watch out for those pop-up showers. So let's bring in Ben Bailey, and he is tracking that risk for us. Yeah, Karen, now we're seeing some thunderstorms in spots, a couple lightning strikes out there. The good news is these storms not severe, but dropping a pretty intense amount of rainfall, at least in some very small areas. Gross Eel seeing one of those storms right now. A couple more in the southern end of Monroe County. Generally, these are all south of 94, so most of this should be staying in our south zone as it is all south of that front. But just ick out there right now. Heat index readings in Ann Arbor, 99 degrees. Most areas are seeing the heat index in the 90s, and it looks like we've got a lot more of that to go. More uh, on the seven day forecast and some improvement, but it looks like we're going to have to wait a while. Karen. All right, thank you, Ben. After months of construction chaos, the queue line has been up and running for a mere two months, and its chimes are already ringing in the sweet sounds of success for local businesses. Paula Tutman is in Detroit along the queue line, and Paula, it looks like people are actually starting to visit some places that they didn't visit before. Well, absolutely. In fact, there goes one now. This is all about momentum and density. Momentum and density. We're toward the end of the tracks for that streetcar right there, and inside that car, it's bringing that momentum. Barely two months old, and the queue line still has that new streetcar smell and plenty of adventurers. This is the first time we've uh, joined and taken a part of the queue line. It's the first time on the queue line, so. But there's something more to the people just riding up and down Woodward on the queue. These explorers are not gold seekers, but carrying it in terms of business. 20, okay, yeah, we got some change for you too. Roby's Shoes has been in this location just south of New Center, due north of Midtown since 1979. Many of the neighbors are still empty storefronts on this part of Woodward that goes largely ignored by anyone who doesn't live in the immediate area. But since May 12th, Cheryl Roby has seen quite a few new faces in her store. One lady says, wow, I am shocked. I used to shop here more than 30 years ago, and I just assumed you went out of business. And they both bought shoes, which was wonderful. And they both said they'll be back because they know we're here. And if, if it wasn't for the queue line, they wouldn't have bought shoes. Across the street, the story is the same, as the North End Collective is situated near the last stop on the queue. And now we're seeing people, you know, we always asking, how'd you get here? How'd you find us? We had a, quite a few people say they were with the girlfriends and kind of making a day of the queue line. And let me show, just show you a couple other um, options. Just the merchants who've stayed and the newcomers who've just arrived believe this is the next big development stretch based on the M1 Rails Development and Construction Inclusion Report. A total of $7 billion of investment has already been poured into the 1.5 mile Q line route, of which $2.4 billion is still to be spent. It's been pretty empty and business has been pretty down for the last few years. A lot of businesses have gone out. There's not a lot of foot traffic. But since the Q line came, more all the buildings around here have been purchased and a lot of new stores are going in really is the point because we've got to go back to that density piece. It is early in the game. I just want you to kind of picture this, Karen, and everyone else. Take a look at this block right here. You've got a couple of onesie twosies. It's just not going to work with those kinds of stores. But I talked to Sue Mosey with uh, Midtown Inc. and I said, Sue, what is this block alone going to look like a year from now? And she says, based on restaurants and housing and boutiques already booked right now, she's talking about a 70% occupancy rate just for this block alone. Karen, this really is a game changer. It really is, and it's so great to see those mom and pop shops starting to thrive now. A great story. Thank you, Paula. Well, the big question facing 12 million Americans today, will Republicans vote to repeal Obamacare without a replacement plan? Republicans don't seem to have the votes, but we could see a showdown in the Senate next week. Kimberly Gill is tracking the latest that is always changing, and we join her now in the newsroom. Kim. Yeah, Karen. Hi, good afternoon. Today, President Trump invited all 52 Republican senators to have lunch with him at the White House to talk about the failed health care bill. Following that meeting, he had a message for Congress.
For seven years, you promised the American people that you would repeal Obamacare. People are hurting. Inaction is not an option. And frankly, I don't think we should leave town unless we have a health insurance plan, unless we can give our people great health care. Because we're close. We're very close. I think it's really beyond belief that we have a President of the United States who is working overtime to sabotage the health care that millions of Americans receive. Now, earlier in the week, the president had called for repealing the Affordable Care Act and replacing it later. Well, today he says he's supporting both a repeal and a replacement in the same bill. Following the president's comments, Majority Leader Mitch McConnell confirmed there will be a procedural vote on repealing Obamacare sometime next week. Uh, Karen, he did not say, though, whether Congress would work through the August recess. We'll keep you posted. All right. Thank you very much, Kim. Well, you heard about possible pop-up showers in the first forecast coming up. Ben Bailey back with a seven-day forecast, and it is filled with chances for rain. Also ahead, usually a good catch gets cheers, but it is jeers for this person. If you're a controversial politician, this story's going viral. Up first, how the U.S. Congress is getting involved in the battle over this sick little boy. New developments in the Charlie Guard case coming your way next. Controversial. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. In Oak Park, police are hoping you know who these three suspects are. Accused of scamming an elderly woman out of more than $20,000. How do they do it? They have to do it with this parking lot and a bag filled with cash. First at 4 continues with news from around the world and across the country. Let's start with that legal battle over a sick little boy. You may have heard the story of Britain's Charlie Guard. He was born with a rare genetic condition. Now, Congress has granted him permanent resident status in the United States. His parents want to bring him to the U.S. for a therapy trial, but British doctors and British courts have said it will only prolong his suffering. The congressional action could mean he can come to the U.S. without their permission. In Massachusetts, this was a massive effort to save a man who fell into an abandoned well. It happened in the middle of the night, about 1 in the morning. More than 20 firefighters worked to rescue the 37-year-old man who fell 10 to 15 feet down into the well in the backyard of a home. He suffered back and leg injuries. Rescue crews say someone moved an 18-inch steel cover that was on top of that well, and that is why the man fell in. Moving to California, where a wildfire has forced thousands of people from their homes, the so-called Detweiler Fire is threatening 1,500 homes and buildings near Yosemite National Park. Right now, nearly 5,000 people have been forced to evacuate. So far, the fire has consumed 45,000 acres and is only 7% contained. The cause of the fire is not known, but experts say it is being fed by heavy plant growth due to that wet winter we've been talking about. Ben is back, uh, makes a little hot and cold, and you get some showers. Yeah, we're about to get wet uh, around here multiple times as we get into the upcoming weekend. Are we talking about um, washout kind of scenario or just almost irritation, like every day we're just getting hit? <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Is that it. the way? Is that a meteorological term? Irritation, yes. Yeah, there you go. Most of the forecast will be that, but there will be at least one day coming up uh, where you probably want to make alternate plans, uh, not going to be spending too much time outside. Uh, today, maybe one of those for different reasons reasons. Temperatures outside are uh, topping 90. The actual mercury there at Ann Arbor and City Airport now to 91, 90 in Adrian. But look at these hu uh, heat index readings. 99 out in Ann Arbor. Feels like 95 in the city. Not much different down there in Adrian. And some slightly cooler numbers where those thunderstorms uh, may have uh, cooled down the atmosphere just a little bit. You can see them pop up here on the radar, especially here in our south zone. This is south of a frontal boundary. As we broaden out the picture, you can see a bigger complex of thunderstorms uh, that's just now starting to roll into the Twin Cities. That's going to eventually dive more south and east and not going to be a player in our forecast tonight. Uh, but the stuff that's out there should fade pretty early this evening. You'll see that here on the map. As the front goes south of us, it's not going to stay down there for long. It's going to kind of bubble back, and that's going to be a focus for thunderstorms tomorrow. Could be starting as soon as the midday hours. We'll see some of those pop, and really any of these could become severe tomorrow. Looks like damaging winds will be the biggest threat with that. Those should fade as we get into the evening hours, but Friday, at least late, as we get into Friday, 
Friday night, uh, that next chance of thunderstorms arise. There's the severe risk for tomorrow. And again, we're in the slight risk, which is category two here in the southern part of the state. So we'll keep our eyes on those thunderstorms for the second half of Thursday. 70 degrees tonight, partly cloudy and definitely muggy. That humidity is not going anywhere. Winds are going to be calm, which is not really helping the cause. And as we look at high temperatures tomorrow, very similar to what we saw today, 89 Dearborn, 88 down at the airport and city should see 89 as well. A couple spots may get near 90 degrees and that looks like it's going to be at the southern end of Lenaway and Monroe counties. Otherwise, do expect those heat index readings to again return to the mid 90s, especially in our south and metro zone. High temperatures mid 80s there in our west zone, north zone, slightly cooler up here, 82 in Lexington and Sandusky, but generally mid 80s for most of the zone. And here's your irritation in the seven day forecast. We'll see thunderstorm chances last pretty much through the weekend and then some showers lingering Monday. Saturday looks like most of that day is going to be wet. It's not going to be continuous rain start to finish a little bit drier by the time we get towards the end, but it looks at least the first half of Saturday uh, looks like we're going to be indoors. So temperatures finally cooling early next week here. Still ahead, first at four, we showed you Crocs that cost $200 yesterday, so now something even more expensive. What makes these sandals so special? I'm waiting to hear the price. A first, Apple working on a secret weapon that you could use during an emergency someday. I'll explain in our trending stories coming next. In today's trending stories, an interesting new upgrade from Apple. The tech company is working on a way for you to secretly call 911 for help during an emergency. The company has a new patent, and you've probably seen movies where the hostages try to call for help, but those bad guys see them dial 911. So this technology would actually use fingerprints or pressure to trigger the call without anyone knowing. Now it would give responders the location of the phone and but actually pull video or audio from the scene. Now, it's not clear if the new feature would be included in a software update. You know, for as many times as you butt dial people with your phone, this seems like it's going to be more of a problem. I mean, it, it, the, the purpose of it is great. I mean, right. you know, you, you think, hope it would work, but then you wonder, like, well, whose fingerprint's going to work? Because if it's just my fingerprint, but my child needs to call 911, then, like, what happens? Great point. So. Well, yesterday we showed you fancy Crocs. Well, now check out these fancy Birkenstock sandals. This is a limited edition collection with handcrafted buckles made of solid sterling silver. That does sound fancy, but it's also expensive. The list price for these special sandals, 799 bucks, and yep, they're trending today. First, he was booed. Then Governor Chris Christie had to endure the jokes on social media. So in case you have not heard, the New Jersey governor was at the Mets game last night. The St. Louis Cardinal hit a foul ball in the third inning. Christie was able to reach out. And yes, he caught it. Take a look. Well, the crowd booed, although he did give that ball to a kid. The jokes came fast and furious on social media, including this one, quote, True story, Chris Christie just caught a foul ball at the Mets game. Emails show he shut down the whole aisle to be sure he got it. That tweet, a reference to that infamous bridge gate. Still had a traffic stop that brought a woman to tears. Eventually reaches a happy ending. But was this whole thing really a good idea? Coming up first, here's a look at what I'm working on for tonight at 11. Once again, underwater. These Detroit homes are getting flooded every time it rains. You could actually hear it gushing like a geyser. The city was contacted, but no fix. Again, water. So the flooding continued. Soon after I contacted the city, look who showed up. Now we have been able to discover that there is an issue. So why did residents have to wait and who's responsible? The defenders on the case tonight at 11. Our clients.